Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call. That was the President of the United States, Richard M. Nixon, talking to astronauts Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin. The time was nearing midnight in Washington on Sunday, July 20th, 1969. They were on the surface of the moon, and it was sunrise there. And now you are in Mission Control, Houston, Texas. The mission of Apollo 11, Man on the Moon, has just been completed. For the first time in weeks, it is quiet here. The television screens are dark. A few amber lights still flicker at consoles, beckoning flight controllers who have left their positions. A soft electronic hum still permeates the atmosphere to remind us that the giant is only sleeping, resting after eight days of creation. For eight days, three hours, 18 minutes, and 21 seconds, this room has reverberated to the sounds of Apollo 11. Three men, Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin, and Michael Collins, turned man's dream into reality as they flew off to the moon and landed, explored, took off, and came home. This is their flight log, recorded by their own voices as they lived the mission and reported its dramatic moments in conversation with Apollo Control. Day 1, July 16, 1969. 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time at the Kennedy Spaceport. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T-minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T-minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. giant stack of the Saturn Apollo, 363 feet of gleaming white equipment being pushed up through the blue skies of Florida by the force of the first stage engine, seven and a half million pounds of thrust, sending Apollo 11 on its way toward space. The commander, Neil Armstrong, civilian, 38 years old, veteran test pilot, making his second journey into space, leaving his wife and two sons behind as he sets out on man's greatest adventure. With him, Edwin Aldrin, nicknamed Buzz, the lunar module pilot, a 39-year-old lieutenant colonel in the United States Air Force. Aldrin also making his second space voyage. Married, the father of three children, two sons and a daughter. The command module pilot is Michael Collins, age 38, also an Air Force lieutenant colonel going into space for the second time. The father of two young daughters and a son. We're predicting third stage shutdown at 11 minutes 42 seconds. Velocity 25,254 feet per second. Downrange 1,400 miles now. Altitude uh, 102.8 nautical miles. Shut down. Shut down right on time. 101.4 by 103.6. Roger, shut down. We copy 101.4 by 103.6. They are in orbit spinning round the world at a speed of 17,000 miles an hour at an altitude of more than 100 miles. Once around the world and halfway round again, finally, as the spacecraft flies over the Pacific Ocean, Mission Control Communicator Bruce McCandless talks to the crew as the third stage engine is fired a second time and they are outward bound. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, slightly less than one minute to ignition and everything is go. Right here. Ignition. We confirm ignition and the thrust is go. Guidance looking good. Velocity 26,000 feet per second. Apollo 11, this is Houston at one minute. Trajectory and guidance look good and the stage is good. Over. Coming up on 27,000 feet per second. Telemetry and radar tracking both solid. Velocity 27,800 feet per second. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Trust is good. Everything's still looking good. 
Dispatcher. Apollo 11, this is Houston. We show, show cutoff and uh, we copy the numbers and now 62. Yeah, Houston, Apollo 11, that's that and gave us a magnificent ride. With the Earth receding, growing smaller behind them, moving at a speed now of 25,000 miles an hour, the crew separates from the third stage, maneuvers, docks with and extracts the lunar module. The first day in space is nearing its end. Here is the voice of mission control. This is Apollo control at 11 hours, 29 minutes into the flight of Apollo 11. We don't expect to hear a great deal more from the crew tonight uh, at about 11 hours, 20 minutes. Uh, we said good night to them from mission control. Uh, they're beginning their sleep period about two hours early. Uh, the additional time available for sleep uh, was made available by uh, deleting the mid-course correction. This is Apollo Control at 11 hours, 32 minutes. Day 2, July 17th. This is Apollo Control at 22 hours, 49 minutes ground elapsed time. Crew has been awake for some time, according to the surgeon. Spacecraft communicator here in Mission Control with the green team. Bruce McCandless is standing by to make a call to the crew. It's in the process of uh, taking over from Ron Evans. Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth has uh, asked that he make a call to the crew. We're standing by for this call momentarily. Apollo 11, Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Morning, Houston, Apollo 11. Roger, Apollo 11, good morning. If you're interested in the morning news, I've got a summary here from PAO, over. Okay, we're all listening. Okay, from Jodrell Bank, England, via AP. Britain's big Jodrell Bank radio telescope stopped receiving signals from the Soviet Union's unmanned moonshot at 5.49 EDT today. And a spokesman said that it appeared that the Luna 15 spaceship, quote, has gone beyond the moon, unquote. Uh, another quote, we don't think it has landed, said a spokesman for Sir Bernard Lovell, director of the observatory. Washington, UPI, Vice President R.O.T. Agnew has called for putting a man on Mars by the year 2000. But Democratic leaders replied that priority must go to needs on Earth. By United Press International, initial reaction to President Nixon's granting of a holiday Monday to federal employees so that they could observe a national day of participation in the Apollo 11 moon landing mission mostly was one of surprise. Hempstead, New York. Joe Namath officially reported to the New York Jet Training Camp at Hofstra University Wednesday following a closed-door meeting with his teammates over his differences with pro football commissioner Peter Roselli. Over. Roger, thank you. Bruce. And so the day begins, with the news of the day being read to men who are making history. It's now 34 hours after liftoff. We're waiting for a television transmission. Oh, Apollo 11, Houston, we got the network all configured for the TV. You can uh, start any time you want, over. 